three questions. So how much are you reading? What are you reading? And most interestingly, how much do you understand when you read? And so we started to implement a word counter. In this case, we use an optical eye tracker, so the glasses don't look so nice, but they have some small infrared cameras underneath, and they, you get these images from the pupils, and with this you can recognize the fast eye movements called saccades, and the fixations of the eye. And what we can do, we can recognize reading, and we can recognize line breaks, so these long saccades for, uh, backward. And with that, we can get an average you know, uh, estimation of how much words you're reading uh, during the day, if you are wearing this type of device. I'll get to that, back to that later, because it's maybe not something you might want to wear the whole day. And uh, towards document type classification, we can also just use your eye movements to not only detect how much you're reading, but also what you're reading. So especially important for Japanese uh, students is distinction manga versus textbook, but you can also detect novel or uh, magazine or newspapers just by looking at the eye movement. As long as the uh, reading material is significantly different in, in setup. So if you have images versus two columns of text versus one column of text. And then the most interesting part, and we're still working on that, is we try to figure out how much do you understand when you read. And uh, we are already able to detect difficult words just by using the histogram of fixations. So in this case, red dots are your fixations, or the fixations of the student. They are reading some English text, actually from, a, from an English uh, test. And just by looking at the histogram, so how many fixations are on the word, we can de de detect, in this case, mortgages is a difficult word. And if you can imagine, we have now some follow-up research as well. We can already uh, get a rough estimate of the TOEIC score. It's similar to the TOEFL in Japan. So maybe in future, you don't have to take a test, but I can just give you a sheet of paper. You read it, and afterwards, we can give you an estimate of how good your, your English skills are. <laughs> maybe. Uh, and, and that's kind of also the, 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 the future work we try to implement the Fitbit for the mind. However, I mean, there's some problems with that. Um, the biggest problem is uh, the devices you saw beforehand, they are not really so nice. So we tried already some things with, you know, Google Glass. I tried it out with my grandparents again. So it's always a, a, a way to, for me to see if the technology is useful or not. Uh, but it's, you know, there were some interesting applications, like my grandmother liked to use it for cooking because she's carrying around the timer with her. Or my grandfather actually took pictures of his medication. He has to take medication three times a day. Uh, and uh, so he can then later on check if he actually took the medication. He's working usually in a workshop, so every time if he forgets to take the medication, he has to go inside. And if you can just quickly check uh, backwards, ah, 20 minutes ago I took it, so he doesn't have to do that. But still, it's not so nice. I mean, we started with the eye trackers, Google Glass is maybe a little bit nicer, but depending on uh, where you work. Uh, but now we are collaborating with Jins, the Japanese glasses maker, and I'm actually wearing some smart glasses and you might not have recognized this. So that's kind of a, a nice device. And the interesting part here is it's not really um, a full computer. It's just a sensing device. It has three electrodes that can detect my eye movements and uh, some motion sensors inside. And now you might wonder what we can do with it. Maybe I can show you a small demo if it's working. Yeah, so uh, this is currently my, my eye blink. And as well as if I move my eyes left and right, you should see it in the upper graph. So if I move left, right, left, right, left, right. So um, that's something we're collaborating with. And you might wonder, you know, what can you do with the devices? So already it's not on the market yet. We we'll have a release, uh, and they have a release end of the year. But they got already a couple of awards, also a CES award for an innovative product. And uh, so uh, this is some work, so you saw we can detect blinks and uh, in the early prototypes we can detect left and right eye movement, now up and down is also working. Um, and uh, yeah, what, what do you do if you have, as a student, if you have eye blink implemented?
and then, uh, of course, um, you try to play the keyboard. <laughs> um, this is very, very difficult, so that's why she yeah, is also really, really concentrated. But um, uh, on, on a more serious note, of course, uh, the reading detection works also, so you can get also uh, the, the reading detection working. Uh, and also talking is easy because in talking your your uh, your eye blink is uh, changing, and that nearly brings me to the end. Uh, just one quick so the last thing we're working on now is we try to correlate more about eye gaze and your brain activity, and we did some recordings that are related to learning with an FNIRS device, and we currently try to figure out. Uh, your state while you do difficult tasks. So in this case, you have uh, four um, four uh, difficulty levels for a memory task. You know, one is easy, second one is harder, the third one is hardest, and then the fourth one, the person gave up. <laughs> and, and we really try to detect this, uh, and we we try to figure out if it's possible over the glasses because then we can keep you on a perfect level for 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 training or learning. Thanks, that's it. Very inspired your eyes. In the current now, the science making a future and science making a product. They're making a difference already. And next, Professor.